Welcome to video three, the fourth video overall, since the first one was number zero. I started with zero like we do in Grasshopper and in coding since it's more confusing. In coding there are good reasons to start counting at zero, and those reasons carry over to Grasshopper, but they don't probably carry over to counting videos about Grasshopper. But still, this is video four, welcome. Nope, this is video three. We'll make three more surfaces here. The first one is a circle. And all of these surfaces are good ways to explore some major components in Grasshopper, and the circle is going to be very easy. It will go real quick, and we'll be moving a little more quickly as we progress in general. But of course, just pause and go back whenever you need. That's what I do all the time when I watch tutorials, a lot of pausing and playing things over and over again. Okay, on to the circle. Back to where we left off. So I'm going to start again with a, with a point, so I'm just going to grab all of these, holding Shift, Alt to copy them, and let's show this point. And let's move it a little bit further along the x-axis, so I'm going to increase the maximum here to 60, and then just move this point over here. I'm actually going to move this surface a little bit that way and that way for now move this here down here and so for circle all we need to do is type circle and get this one this is just a circle component that holds a circle this one is to, cre to create a circle and to create a circle we need a plane that's why you see this plane showing up again it's it's at the origin and on the xy surface we don't actually need to construct a plane, but if we were going to make a circle that's not on the world XY plane, then we would need to construct a plane. But by default, if we just put a point into that, it's going to make a circle at that point in the XY plane. And then we just need to, to define a radius. And so I'm going to start actually by typing in number to get a number component and call this radius and plug that into the radius and since there's nothing going in there it's it's complaining and saying that um, we need a radius actually and so let's get a number between 1 and 20.000 and plug that in so now we have a circle with a radius of 1 I'm going to copy radius and paste it here so this number slider is called radius and we can increase the radius of this circle let's do it to about 5 then we just need to move in the z direction unit z and again i'm going to get a number component and call this height hei and then i'm going to copy this radius number slider and call it height and we're going to move now we're going to move this circle geometry in the z direction and this adjusts our height now let's hide these and we can hide this too for now because we're going to put them in a merge component again. We'll put the bottom one in the first one and the top one in the second one. Get rid of that input. Now we have two circles here and again we just need to loft them. Type loft, plug that in. Now we have a circle surface. To get the surface output, get a surface component, put the loft in there, hide that. Let's call this circle surface copy it hide this one now we have our output and we need our inputs over here forgot to get a start point so getting a point component calling this start point hide that point and now we have our three inputs that's all we need for the circle so let's grab everything that's going to be inside our circle component and click the middle button, go to uh, cluster, and let's call this circle make circle surface. And we can group this like we did the other ones. Control G. I right clicked on the group and go down to color to adjust the color. And we can name this group make circle surface. Okay, so that one was easy. 
And again, we're making all of these surfaces so that we can just quickly switch between them and apply the glass sponge pattern, the glass sponge structure to any of these surfaces. And the differences between these surfaces will give us an opportunity to think more generally about what that glass sponge structure is and how, how to make a component that will apply that structure to any surface, regardless of all the different kinds of surfaces that we can have. And Another kind of surface that might introduce some different difficulties is a triangular surface. So the obvious difference between these two surfaces, this curved surface and the flat surface and the circle surface, is the circle surface comes back and connects with itself. And so we'll see why that brings up some new challenges when we start to make the actual glass sponge structure. A triangular surface, or even one with four or more sides that comes back and connects on itself, will bring up some new challenges also, and those will be apparent a little bit later. But for now, let's just make a quick triangular surface. So again, I'm gonna grab this construct point component, and let's see where that point is. Let's move it further in the X direction. And what I'm gonna do is move this point twice. So similar to what we did for the flat surface, we moved the point once, if you want to if you want to see what's in a in a clustered component just double click on it and then you'll go inside and it'll show you everything that's inside that component and you can adjust it in any way that you want. So for the flat surface we took this, we took a starting point and we moved it once and then we made a line between those two points. So for the triangular one we're going to move it twice and we're going to make a line that connects back on itself what's called a polyline. So let's get the move component and like we did with the flat surface, let's get an x, y, z vector, vector x, y, z, and get a slider, let's say between 1 and 20.000, and let's get two of those. And we're not going to move it in the z direction at all, so that the default of 0 here is fine. So let's move this one just over here. So that's our first move point, and then we're going to move this point, or actually, let's just move this, uh, the, the start point. Again, let's get a point and call it start point. And we'll hide this. So let's move the start point again. And we can just copy this xy vector by clicking Alt, or pressing Alt. And we'll keep this one up here, and we'll change this to a point up here and so now this start point is moving in this direction according to this vector here something like that so now we have three different points we have a start point we have this move over here and this move up here let's combine all of these points into a merge component and the order that we put them isn't going to be that important here but it it is in other scenarios, so let's. I'm just gonna like be a little bit conscious of what order this goes in. I'm gonna do it in a counterclockwise fashion. So I'm gonna put the start point in first, and then this move point here, and this one up here. Arranging things in counterclockwise order is important in some applications in the future, um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, not in this tutorial, but in another one. Let's hide all of those. So we have all three of our components in this merge component, or all three of our points in this merge component here. And now we can get a polyline component by typing in polyline and plug our vertices in there. Let's hide these. And so this isn't quite a triangle. We only have two sides of this triangle. And that is because this is asking for a Boolean input, either true or false, and it's closed. So it's asking, should it close this polyline? Should it, the last point connect back to the first point? So again, we have a list of three points here. Let's look at these three points, 0, 1, and 2. And so it's asking, should 2 connect back to 0? Since this is the last point in the list, and this is the first point in the list. And the default is false. If you hover over, you can see one locally defined value is false. We want that to be true. We want, yes, we want these to connect back together. And so we can get a Boolean toggle. Boolean is just, it's just a yes or no operation, true or false, zero or one. So if you type in toggle, it's going to be kind of like a little button here. And if you double click it, it'll be true, false. You can change it just like that. 
we want it to be true and you can put it in there. You don't need the Boolean toggle in this case, so let's disconnect this. You can just right click and go set Boolean to true, but sometimes it's nice to, to see the inputs. So now we have a, a polygon or a polyline triangle. So let's move this in the Z direction to get the height. Move and type in Z, whoops, Z to get the unit Z vector. And by default, that's just going to be one because this is set to one. And let's get a height. So between one and 40 again, 0 0.000, so that we have a real number with decimals. And so now we can adjust the height. Let's get a number component and call it height. I'm going to copy height so I can also label this height. And then let's merge these two polylines into the same component. And you don't need, I've been using a merge component every time, and I, always, I like to do that so that I know what order things are, are going into, say, loft, which we're, we're using loft next. Since it doesn't matter, you could just grab the loft component. In our case, it, it doesn't matter what order they go in. So you could put this one in, and then you could press shift. And when I press shift, you can see a little plus sign comes up next to my pointer. When you press shift, it'll allow you to put two different inputs into the same input. If I weren't pressing shift, then when I put that in, it would just keep whichever the last one was. But if I want to press shift, I can have two in and then it'll loft it like this. But again, I'm going to just use this merge component and get rid of that input and put that into the loft. For now, we can hide all of these. Now we have a loft and we need to get our output surface. So I'm going to type in surface again. And this time it's not working because technically this isn't a surface. Grasshopper doesn't recognize this as a surface. So what we can do instead is instead of getting a surface component, let's type brep. And Grasshopper will understand this as a brep. Brep stands for boundary representation. And we don't need to get into what exactly a brep is, but it, it's basically uh, just something that defines the, the points that are within a boundary and, and outside of a boundary. A surface is pretty specific in what a surface can be. In this case, we need to house this in a brep component, but we will still call this, we'll still call this a surface. We'll call this a, a triangular surface because Grasshopper doesn't care what we call things. And so this is our output, triangular surface. I'm going to copy that and hide this one. So now we have our output. We need to pull our inputs over to the left. So I'm going to copy this and right click, go to wire display hidden, just so that that wire isn't getting in the way. So now we have a height and we need to pull these X and Y components for our initial moves. Let's pull those over to the left. So let's get a number component and we'll call this X move one and we'll call this y move one we'll copy both of these and call them x move two and y move two just for our, our first move point and our second move point um we should plug this in first so now we have everything that we need for our inputs we have our point and then we have two inputs here two inputs here and one here so five six different inputs Let's move these over here and this a little bit further to the left so we have room to, to grab just what we want inside the component. Let's grab all of this, middle click, and cluster. So now we have another cluster. Did we call this? Okay, we didn't name this cluster up here. So let's call this make curved surface or create. Let's be consistent. Create circle surface. And we'll call this one create triangular surface. Okay, now we can group all of this. We don't need these to be so far apart, but we should rename them. We should rename these sliders. And we can clean these a little bit. All right, so now let's grab all of this, Control-G, change the color to white, and 
make triangular surface. Okay, now we have four surfaces. The last one is going to be the easiest of all. We're just going to reference a curve from Rhino. So I'm going to go to top view. We have all of our surfaces here and I'm going to click or I'm going to type in the shortcut for polyline. I think this is the shortcut for polyline by default. I may have actually changed it to just PL, but you can just type in polyline. And then I'm just going to draw a polyline like this. I uh, clicked four times, one to start it, and then three other clicks for the next points. And then I'm going to click either, I'm going to type either spacebar or enter to end it. So now we have a polyline in Rhino. So we can go over to Grasshopper and type curve. And we're not going to make a curve in Grasshopper. We're just going to grab this component that holds a curve. And we're going to right click here and go to set one curve. And then it's going to show us our, our Rhino viewport and we can choose this just clicking on it and it'll pop back up and now this curve is in grasshopper and say we're going to share this grasshopper file this grasshopper script of somebody else so that they don't need to also have the whatever rhino file you have all they are going to need is just the grasshopper file and it doesn't matter what rhino file they use to open it up we can right click here and go to internalize data and so now, even if I delete this, we still have that curve inside of our Grasshopper Canvas. And so we don't even need to make a component for this one. We just need to go move in the Z direction. So this is going to be our height, 1 to 40.000. And so that's our move vector. We can adjust our height here. And then merge to bring these two curves into the same component get rid of that input let's hide all of this loft okay now we have a referenced curve that defines this last surface and again i don't think this will be recognized if we type in a surface as as a surface no nope. so let's delete that and get a breadth and we can call this referenced surface and let's call this height okay so that's it for our five different kinds of surfaces that we'll be applying the glass sponge structure uh, glass sponge structure to next we'll actually just make that structure